Welcome, everybody. It is the last two weeks of fiscal year. That's why I'm in semi-celebration mode. I'm still here for right now, and but uh, I am I'm, uh, getting myself half ready to check out because every October 1st, I leave. All right, real quick, just I want to say thanks to all you that are first responders and all of the folks that are that are in the military that serve our country and keep our safe. Keep us safe. Am I right, Dr. Rafael Marrero? That's right. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you very much. We appreciate you all. And we know that some of you are service disabled, veteran owned companies here, and you deserve to get to get uh, business first, especially because of the sacrifice that you've made for our country. So we appreciate you very, very much. I am Dave Lowe. I'm the CEO of ISI Federal, and we do data, we do marketing and business development based on that intelligence that we do. If you take a look on the right-hand side, you might recognize some of these things. GovBrief is one of ours. We use that to, to go to the marketplace and we'll talk a little bit about that, but today is really about what we can do in the last few days uh, and get some good advice from our folks that are here today. And um, But if you look at this, we've, we've got some history in this place and I will tell you that we will be talking about SAM.bit and QuickFuse quite a bit because it's the one thing that you can do to monitor today. QuickFuse, Q-U-I-K. FUSE.com monitors GSAE by you can test drive it for three days. And if you keep it for a year and you don't sell 500% of what you invested in quick fuse, we will refund your money. A couple of things that you need to do though, just to make sure you're doing it right. If you know a little bit about GovBrief, we do federal briefings. That means we push you out as a subject matter expert. We, we help you educate the customer. We help you qualify the leads and evangelize your brand. You can see it at govbrief.us, but you cannot do that right now because they ain't going to show up. You know why? Why are they not going to show up, Greg Clark? Why are they not showing up? You're going to, you're asking me, the, yeah, the, the Sam, the Sam.gov guy. <laughs> Because it's fiscal year end, man. That's the answer. Because yeah. it's fiscal year end. Say it. Because it's fiscal year end. That's right. That's why you have to plan for 2022. Right. I love it. And in fact, the only things that you can be doing, we do, we'll be talking today. Carl Dixon, you here today? I don't see you here. If you if you came in some other way, let me know. Um, I'll be doing this with Carl Dixon. He's the founder of Prop Library. I've known Carl for many years. In fact, we first started with ISI Federal. He's one of the first people that I connected with, got a lot of great information, and he likes paperwork like you do, Greg, and that, and that is not me. All right, but I will be doing a couple of uh, last minute, win last minute, simplified acquisition and win last minute sole source contracts, both of those doing double duty on the 21st, I'll be doing that. And then with this other character, Greg Clark, who doesn't know that it's fiscal year end, apparently, um, <laughs> uh, we'll be doing responding to RFPs, because guess why? Because that's what you do, right, Mr. Clark? That's exactly what we do. That's exactly right. And if you want the whole series, you can do it for $349. Instead of $225 a piece, you could do $349. and gets all of them, videos included, and, and, uh, and Monday roundtables. We also have with us the doctor, the good doctors in the house, Dr. Rafael Marrero. How you doing, big man? Doing great. Thank you. Thank you, Dave. And you have been involved in many, many different things. You help with small business financing and personal submissions. You did that. Uh, but you also do socioeconomic certifications and help people deal with getting themselves ready for the federal government, correcto? Procurement readiness, procurement and contract readiness, and uh, socioeconomic certifications is a fundamental part of what we do. We help you look great on paper and be ready when you're in front of that contracting officer or that potential contracting teaming partner. You got to look your best. You got to bring your A game. That's where we come in. That's right. And we're going to talk about that in a few minutes because a lot of that's getting you set up for 2022. Uh, what, I don't think Sean may. Do I see Sean? Sean's not here, is he? Well, he's a bum. All right. So Sean May, he, he is with Fed Practice Group. He's a lawyer. They're on K Street in Washington, D.C., but they absolutely specialize in small businesses and do not charge the K Street prices, if you know what I mean. If you know where K Street is, you know what I mean. Uh, but they help with bid protests, security clearance. We're going to be doing a briefing with Sean and his crew on FOIA, a Freedom of Information Act, coming up. So I have a question for you. I was going to have Sean talk about this since he's on it, but since he's not here, I got to talk for him. So what if you could monitor SAM.gov the way it was supposed to be done? You could do NAICS, PSE, keywords, or even 
monitor contract act, uh, activity by your competitor. And then you might be able to just pick up the phone and email the people that are involved, deliver your value proposition and develop a relationship. Can you do that? If you know who you're after, can you pick up the phone and can you deliver your value proposition? If you can, this is the system for you because it actually will help you connect with those folks. So and you can do that. You can sign up today, sam.bid. That's it. Sam.bid, S-A-M dot B-I-D. That's it. Go there and you'll see it. And uh, and I will introduce to you Greg Clark. You talked a minute ago. Uh, he does proposal writing, GSA schedule development, and other contract vehicles. What does all that stuff mean, Greg Clark? Well, for a few years now, you've heard me say we've uh, we've uh, we help companies identify and evaluate opportunities. And if it's a good fit for your experience and capabilities, we help you put your proposal together to increase your chances of winning those contracts. And uh, we had been uh, up over 380 wins with a combined value approaching $2 billion, but I can't say that anymore because we have officially topped $2 billion in it's government contract two, wins. Raphael. <laughs> Two billion dollars, <laughs> and we've also <clears throat> and we've also helped about four hundred and twenty-five companies get on the GSA schedule and manage their contracts. So those are the two areas that we focus in. Been in business uh, as of last month, twenty-six years. Twenty-six years. Get some experience, man. Yeah, the child labor laws were a lot more slack <laughs> back then. He was three. He was three when he started. <laughs> That's exactly right. Fantastic. And I will speak up for Sally White, who's normally here. I don't know where she is, um, but she she was normally here. Uh, Sally helps with connecting. She does help. She helps with opportunity teaming. She has a lot of experience and connectivity in, in Department of Energy and Navy, and she's a LinkedIn superhero. So if you need help with that, You'll get, a, you'll get a question a little bit later if you need some help. That's who's going to be helping you with your LinkedIn and some of your SEO stuff and all the things it does social media. I'm too old for that, Rafael. I don't understand all that stuff, but she understands it very well. So we appreciate uh, everything that Sally does. And if she pops in, we'll make sure we do that. Peter Timbis is in the house. What is it that TFN Action Capital does, Peter Timbis? I think it has to do with contract funding or something. Yes, good morning. Well, we've been doing it for 30 years. That's we just land, to make Greg look bad. Excuse me? That's just to make Greg look bad. Yeah. We, uh, we've been providing funding for government contractors and commercial contractors since 1991. So if you've got a government contract purchase order or a commercial contract or purchase order, we're going to lend to that opportunity rather than your financial statements. We do it on a nationwide basis. We financed probably last year, we did a uh, 1.5 billion in that, receivable Rafael, finance. Rafael, the billion. Billion with a B. So, billion. So um, we've been around a long time. We're straightforward. There's no cost to get up and running with us. And so if you need financing or if you need a financial support letter, because they're going to be talking about how do you get additional business, we can provide you with a financial support letter to, to give you that when you're when you're going for a government contract. So uh, we're very good. Uh, please reach out if you need some financing on any of your contracts. Fantastic. I love it, Peter. I love Peter. I, I, we met, I don't know, four or five years ago, maybe six now at a NVSBE conference. And um, I love the I love your model. I love what you guys do. Banks don't understand the federal government, but you guys do. And I appreciate everything that you do. We also have a lady named, hold on a second. I'm going to see if I can make her a co-host. Nancy Underwood is in the house. We don't, nobody here knows Nancy yet, but I'm going to, Nancy, are you there? Yes, I'm here. <laughs> Fantastic. So tell everybody who you are and what you do, because we're. this is all about success in the federal government. So who are you? I'm oh, okay. I kind of I bought this new computer on uh, QVC and it's a large screen, so I have to <laughs> match up to you, rise up to get to it. I haven't gotten a chair <laughs> delivered. I'm Nancy Underwood, and I'm president of Underwood General Engineering and Environmental Consultant Services Inc. But I refer to it as UGE and ECS Inc. Been around for 38 years. Uh, uh, 
I hold a general engineering class A contractor license and an asbestos contractor license. Graduated from Cal State Los Angeles uh, years ago when OSHA first passed that law, 1972, I was graduating with a bachelor's degree in environmental health and safety and uh, environmental um, studies and teaching credential in accident prevention, traffic safety, driver's safety, driver's training. From 82 to 92, we were environmental consultant services. And then I was encouraged by some of the major players that I was a major sub with them for many years. And they go, Underwood, get a class A license in 1991 and e at EPA's office because I wanted to do super fun. And so in 92, I did. I got the class A license, the first in the state of California, minority female. And we've done, um, we have a track record with city, county, state, federal, local agencies um, in health and safety, accident prevention. Um, we also, uh, once we got the license, we were already a major sub to a lot of the major players like Tetra Tech, A.E. Schmidt, uh, Wubba Clyde back then, uh, Clark. And so therefore we, um, I, you, went, you went and got your 8A, I, right? Yes, let me explain that. I got the okay. 8A. SBA is a great, great personal team to work for. I got the 8A uh, certification. I started marketing with FAA, Federal Aviation Administration. That was my dream. And so for the first two and a half years, I was in and out of the FAA doors, um, and all of a sudden, they got tired of seeing my face and says, Underwood, here, take this and see if you can put a team together. And of course, <laughs> wait, I did. Wait they got tired of you. What You were actually calling on them. And they were like, they finally relented after how many years? Two years. Two years. Two, <laughs> over two and a half years. So two and a half. You were two and a half well year known. overnight success. Yeah, going to headquarters here in Los Angeles. Security guard got to know me all letter through. She's been coming here a year. I said, I'm going to keep on coming till I get this contract. That's right. And so, so tell me, tell me this. Hey, hey, Nancy, we don't, we, we got, we got to keep it as quick as we can. Absolutely. So tell everybody how much money you booked as an 8A. $27 million. $27 million. Plus, plus. <laughs> Uh, I had a lot of small projects, like 100000 a million with uh, Navy Southwest, the U.S. Coast Guard, base closing Hawaii. So I marketed for the FAA under the 8A set aside. The contract was a $27 million contract. It, we removed we, uh, remove contaminated hazardous waste, contaminated underground storage tanks in from every runway that every airport that FAA governs and install above ground double wall interstitial convault tanks at the end of every runway for uh, the states of California, Nevada, Arizona, Hawaii, and Idaho, Maine, Guam, San Juan. All Florida, over the place. So you've done you've done contracts all over the place for the federal yes. government, and that's exactly why why you're you're here today. Um, and I appreciate you very much. And we, we're definitely going to reach out to you in just a couple minutes. Let me let me get everybody up to date on what's happening with this particular session. It's always free. Over 2,400 registered. And I think only the 2,400 registered have uh, are the ones that got the reminder because it's September. So we're talk, we'll talk about business development later um, in, in, as you grow. And we get you we get you dialogue with experts and real folks like uh, like uh, Nancy here. And we get real about how things work. Nancy didn't just all of a sudden bippity boppity boo in 16 days get $27 million. No, she was out there for two and a half years and she kept pressing and pressing. And that's what makes success in the federal government. There are no silver bullets, but there are winning strategies that you can follow. We'll show off a little bit for ISI Federal and our friends because uh, remember what you paid for this. So real quick, uh, what are you after? Active opportunities? You want to reach federal stakeholders? Do you want to do business with the, all the rest of the folks that touch the government universe? Tell you what, put your information in the chat so everybody knows where you are, where you're from, what your company is, and just a little blurb about what you provide. Not We don't need, we don't need a novel. Nobody's going to read a novel right now. Right, Raphael? Nobody's Absolutely. reading a novel. Absolutely not. We need to keep it short and sweet. 
Short uh, and sweet. Remember that these folks are overworked, underpaid. They, they, they have a stack of requirements to process. And the last thing they want to hear is a litany. They That's want right. you to net it out for them. And we're going to talk exactly about that. And a real quick disclaimer, this event is not endorsed by GSA or any other agency. So if we have folks here from the government, we do from time to time on a regular basis, actually. If there's anybody from the government, that, that this is not an indication or endorsement to purchase from any vendor who is putting their information in the chat. So you don't have to purchase from any of them. You can if you want to, but this gives us the ability to, to talk. If you'd like to participate, it is easy. You can chat, you can raise your hand, you can put in the Q&A and you can even send emails if you want to. If you've been living under a rock and you don't know what Zoom is, I obviously didn't know what it was when I started because we couldn't get everybody's videos working for some reason. So with the, but you can, you can adjust things if you want, just go up to that upper part there and you can pick that uh, the little thing for view options and you can choose what you want. Um, can we hop, I, I don't know if this is ready, Terry, can you pop um, these things? A winnable opportunity matrix, the, the, VA, the VA procurement readiness and ISI federal capabilities in there. Uh, we'll pop those in. She will do that for you if she didn't know, if, if she's not ready yet, she will do it. And a quick poll is why are you here today? Are you here because you're new to federal contracting? Did you have federal contracts as a sub like Nancy did? Um, and then she wants to go prime. You have federal prime contracts and want to grow or some nutcase sent you an email. Every, you got to be able to, and you can pick as many as you want. So choose that. And while you're doing that, why are we here? It's because freaking $1.2 trillion is a 2021 20, budget. And if you look at it, $694 billion go to DOD and, and $706 billion go to non-DOD. That's billions, guys. All spent, all, all spent, all have to be spent by 9-30-2021. We are in Q4. I mean, the end of Q4. And if you want to win, you need to take a final shot. You have one shot left. And that is you're going to try to disrupt the status quo. And this is what your final shot looks like. We're going to be talking about the action items for the last two weeks. We have some, and, and one of the things I do want, I do want to talk about the, the briefing that we're doing at one. We'll talk a little bit about that. But in the next two weeks, you're, you're going to disrupt the, the, the process. And you also want to start doing this for next year. As Nancy said, this is not a 16 day sprint. This is a marathon and you can start now. You can set things up now, but you want to continue going for the next 54 weeks. All right, what do we got here? 105 of the 178 have responded to this. You got two seconds, two, one, boom, <laughs> you're done. All right, here's what we got, Rafael and Greg. 52% are new to federal contracting. That's pretty cool, right? Right, gents? That's yeah. great, I'm, yeah, absolutely, yeah. Yeah, man. Well, that so means that they, is, need some, they need some help getting their ducks in a row and getting ready to face the music, right? So that's good. That's right. That you're in the right spot because we're not going to blow sunshine here. But we will ask the next question. What is one relationship worth? Because this is going to tell you a lot. Failed. Hold on a second. Gosh. Zoom is having all kinds of issues. All righty. Let's see if we can scroll back here. One relationship is worth nothing. I can't do it. Tell us how much in the chat. I can't tell. Here's what happens in, in the sales. 54 In the next 54 weeks, here's what it's going to look like. It goes from October, it's going to be cold. And get into January, it's going to start warming up in February. And into March, it's going to be a little bit of sales. And it's going to get chilly again. And then when you get back into May and June, and then July and August, it starts to skyrocket again, all the way from July through September. This is the peak of the sales season, and this is red hot right now. And this is how winners win. Here's how they do it. They do business development in the times when it's not a whole lot of sales. You do your business development and you lay those seeds. It's a farmer's market. And you lay those seeds. How do you do it? You do it by marketing and doing introductions, doing follow up, just like Nancy did. Working those referrals, following up again, just like Nancy did. Showing persistence, just like Nancy did. You follow up, you be a resource, you become someone that is helping them with something that they're doing and you're pushing your information to them. They don't suck it in all at once. You got to give it to them in, 
in bite-sized chunks. You keep educating the customer. You follow up. You provide sample scopes of work. You keep following up. And finally, finally, you start being able to respond to proposals. This is how winners win. They start to, within this process, if you're doing it right, you will be reducing the competitive landscape and you're going to be saying, hey, I'm going to push these guys away. They're not small business. We're going to make sure we get this set aside for a small business or our socioeconomic category, which happens to be hub zone or service disabled, whatever your social socioeconomic category is. But we're also seeding them with best practices of what they need within their agency based on what they do in their agency. That is how we're connecting ourselves with what we do, with what they need and what they do to meet what they need to do. And guess what? This is what it looks like. You start to get sales when you find this. And I have no idea where 2016 came from, but here, you, here is what, the, what it looks like in September. This happens to be, you mentioned, um, you, uh, Nancy mentioned that she was in the environmental world. This is a group called MCOR. MCOR started, that you can see, it's kind of bubbling along and then boop, there's a breakout effort. And next thing you know, kink, 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 kink. And that's what the heartbeat of the federal government looks like right there. This is exactly what you can do. It's exactly what Nancy did and booked millions of dollars in the federal government. And here's the deal. Here's how losers lose. They don't do what's necessary. And then they all of a sudden want to come in in, at, in September. What is today? September 14th, 16 days before the end. I want to win. Uh, no, but you, there are ways to win. Even today, you can still monitor. You can still monitor and respond. Can't you, Greg Clark? Can you, you still can respond? Absolutely, to opportunity? I absolutely do. Absolutely. That. I'm, I'm working projects every day. Every day. You can still do it. You take the best shot you can, but here's how's losers lose. Everybody remember the TD Ameritrade. <laughs> That's the anyway. We want to disrupt. We want to disrupt. In the next 54 weeks, we're going to disrupt the status quo. We need to answer one question, just one, just one. Why should they let you in? That's the question you need to answer. Why should they let you in? Why should they let you play? Because let me tell you something. There's hundreds of thousands of companies, right, Rafael Marrero? Absolutely. Millions of them. Why you? So let's talk about that. I, I, for a piece that we do, just real quick, we help market to the stakeholders, finding the buyers, program managers, technical representatives, even the SESs. We push your, we're, your stuff out into the marketplace. But we can't push a blessed thing out of the marketplace if you are not contract ready or procurement ready. Right, Rafael? Absolutely. And, and besides that, having the socioeconomic certification is in, in and of itself just the first step. It's like having a, a gym membership, right? <laughs> just because you have an 8A or you're a veteran owned small business does not mean that you're technically competent to do the job, right? You need to demonstrate proficiency and that you can actually effectuate the work that's stated in the statement of work, right? That was my biggest, that was my biggest challenge when I was chief procurement officer. I sat across the table from a bunch of guys that, that wave credentials at me all day long, but were they technically capable of delivering the job, of getting the job done? That was my biggest concern because that's a risky proposition for an enterprise. So you need to mitigate that concern and show them that you are not going to increase their risk by letting you in the game. And you couldn't be more right. Now, I, I tell you, you guys, you guys handle creating, doing rock and capability statements. Anybody that wants to come into the federal space, I send them over to you because you lay them out and you know what, you know what they, the, the buyers want to see. You mentioned that you were a, a former procurement person uh, that may or may not have resembled a company that, uh, that has uh, fruit. <laughs> see. <laughs> see. So yeah, that's about as much Spanish as I know. See. Yeah, that's you know that. But so Raphael, Ra Ra Raphael can help you with this as well as your SAM registration. Yes, your SAM registration is free, right? It's free. You can, but however, it would be good if it worked for you, wouldn't it, Raphael? That's the biggest thing. I mean, we we get calls from clients all the time who say, "Hey, we actually got a call from a contracting officer, or 
someone who actually read our Sam profile and it sounded convincing, right? Mm -hmm. It was professionally written. It had the right capabilities narrative. It had the right keywords that they were looking for. And why is that? Because we understand vendor risk management. Yep. Because that's what we do. We, man we manage vendors and projects. That's our background. Love it. And you mentioned this too as well. You help folks get their socioeconomic certifications. 8A, as Nancy was an 8A, it's a nine year, maybe 10 year if you started last year <laughs> mm -hmm. or were involved in it before last year. Um, tell, us, tell us what that's like. Well, you know, the... the the amount of paperwork that goes into these socioeconomic certifications can be daunting, right? There's, you're busy running your shop, your business, and the last thing you wanna be do doing is paperwork, right? That's why you hire a professional or a firm such as ours, right? Uh, to manage this paperwork and make the, we make the oy vey go away, that's what we do. <laughs> <laughs> so we help you with the pain, we, we take that pain off your chest and we assume it, so we help you Prepare the application, make sure that it's compliant. It's a compliant response that you cross your T's, dot your I's, and that you have mitigation strategies for any questions should they arise, and that you answer them truthfully and factually. That's very important. Um, once you're ready, then we help you with your marketing materials, with your collateral, such as your capability statement, your capabilities briefing, your contractor business cards. We also audit your websites your website to make sure that it's a contractor website appropriate for the federal government to, to, to look exactly at what you're offering. So the socioeconomic certification is a very important part of it. We help you with it, with the application turnkey from beginning to end, and we help you with the annual recertifications and also with mentor protege agreements and other strategic alliances. And uh, Robert Ramirez is asking how much of your services, Rafael, and you can throw out whatever you want. There's a lot <laughs> well, that I mean, there's a that's a very loaded question. First and foremost, because I don't know <laughs> if the person has applied before, but we we truthfully and factually disclose all of that during the course of a free no obligation consult. We do a, a, a what a free no obligation consult? Yeah, free, free. And no, obligation, letter word. no obligation, right? No so we we answer that we do a, a, a Zoom video consult, and then we answer all the questions. We discuss our services. And, uh, and related fees once we've determined that you're a good fit for the program. First, we pre-qualify you to make sure that that's the case. And then based on a an ownership structure, because if it's just one single owner, well, there's obviously gonna be less work involved, but you know, was there a uh, prior arrest? Are there any tax situations? These are the things that can complicate an application. So we like to discuss this with the candidates uh, during the call and during a free initial consultation that we offer. Love it. And I know that you do great things with that. And I appreciate it. So if you need that, uh, Robert, you can reach out to, to his information is right there. And mm -hmm. we can certainly um, we can certainly help with that. I'm going to get to some tips and then, Greg, we're going to get to you with some specifics about this, because we want to make sure that folks know what they can do right now, right now, so that you can respond you can find and respond to opportunities by uh, September 30th. That's the idea, right? That's why we're here. We're down to 16 days, guys. There's only so much we can do. Number one. Gotta, what's that? And then we got to get to some questions. Go ahead. And we will get to some questions. We'll see if they answer it. We may, we may even answer some of those questions. All right. First thing, get ready. Organize your team. These orders can come anytime. And you want to make sure you're forwarding all your emails to multiple accounts. Any, for your for your input. So anything that's, whatever is on your SAM record, that is what you want to make sure gets forwarded to all your accounts and establish a response system so that everybody on your team knows what they need to do. Then the second thing that I want to say, if this would actually work, is forward your main GSA contact number, whatever the number is, make sure when somebody's calling, somebody can pick up the freaking phone. I cannot tell you how many times this happens. On October 1st, I get I talk to people and they're like, geez, Louise, that came in at a weird time. And, and we didn't even we didn't even answer the phone. But these VoIP systems nowadays, Ring Central is what we use. They'll they'll multi, you can set it up to ring everybody at the same time, landlines and cell phones. And I cannot stress this anymore. Tip three is monitoring those emails. All these last minute deals, they're gonna come to somebody. They're probably going to go out to multiple people because they want to make sure they do it. And guess what? 
Contracting officers don't have to put it out for full and open competition all the time. They can use minimize the competition. That's why we're doing the series that we're doing on, on last minute contracts is exactly this reason. They can be three small businesses. They can be sole sourced. They can be choice of two for service disabled or woman owned. It's much, very easy for them to do that. They can have select GSA contract holders or IDIQ holders and BPA holders. These are the people that are going to be getting the last minute deals because they have the vehicles that make it easy for them to do it. And if you are monitoring your emails, make sure you're checking your junk several times a day because guess what? If you're not and it goes there, and you have to turn it around in, an, in, in a few hours, you're not gonna get it. Tip five is monitoring SAM.gov and eBuy hourly. Hourly, make sure you're logging in and doing it hourly. If you don't know what SAM.gov is, check it out. SAM.gov, it, is a, is it, a, it is a hot mess. That's the first <laughs> thing I'll tell you. <laughs> but by the same token, it is the only mess that you got. So. Get it unless you have a GSA contract. If you have a GSA contract, they'll talk about that. That's e buy, that's the other side. If you have a GSA, both of those you need to monitor regularly. And I'm going to tell you that we built two systems to help with this. So I'm going to get selfish for about 45 seconds. These systems give you the ability to watch for these alerts. The alerts will come to you. And as many as three new postings per minute, folks, three more, three postings per minute sometimes. They're quick turnarounds. By the time you get to September, all these timelines are already shrinking. You're down to three or four days right now. It's going to shrink to 24 hours. I promise you it will because every year we see this happen. And I have known clients that have won in, in, with those quick turns and also clients that have lost because they were not paying attention with this specific with this specific thing. So you can do this by going to SAM.bid. SAM.gov is the government system. Sam.bid is our system. Do not complain to me about the sexiness of this website at this time. I know that it doesn't look the greatest, but guess what? The functionality is what you want right now. We want to be able to help you get there. Sam.bid. And we will get you onboarded as quickly as possible. You can start your, 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 uh, your, uh, it's $89 a month. Start it. You can get started today, sam.bid. The other one that's $89 a month is QuickFuse. You can only do this if you're a GSA contract holder, and this will give you e-buy notification in as close to immediately as we can. It's within minutes of it landing on e-buy. This, when you're talking about a 24-hour turn and response, if you are not paying attention and you something lands in the beginning of the day and you don't check until five o'clock, you probably aren't going to be able to turn that bid around. QuickFuse helps with that. So you can go there. So that's my 45 seconds. The next is forward your fax number. Are you kidding me, Dave? Are you kidding me? Are they still using faxes? They're still using mainframes, ladies and gentlemen. Yes, they're going to keep using faxes. And this can mean if you're not paying attention and it's not because this is what the VoIP systems do too. You can have it go right there and all of a sudden it turns into an email and lands in your email box. Don't ask me how it works. I just know it works. And you can forward that to everybody else on your team. So tip seven is the weekend watch. We have the last weekend is coming up next weekend, not this weekend, the following weekend. Make sure you have people paying attention. I can tell you that there was a $275,000 Department of State contract that was released at 11 a.m. on Sunday morning that was due in 24 hours. What does that mean? That means it's due by 11 a.m. on Monday. <laughs> Guess what? If you are not paying attention over the weekend so that you can turn that thing around within that 24 hours, you will lose. Don't be one of the losers. Be one of the winners. Guess what? That contract wound up not being fulfilled. It was actually created for a client years ago. Created for the client. The client was not monitoring the emails and they lost because they could not respond. We won one last September that was that was issued end of September issued Saturday night due due Monday morning. We caught it, submitted, and won the contract. There it is. There it is. Oh, wow. Mr. Greg Clark, superhero of monitoring on Saturdays. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. So one, one tip eight: re establish redundant redundancies. Redundancies. Fucking talk. 
when in doubt, add another person. What I mean by that is, hey, make sure you're paying attention and that you have the, the structure to say, better to be pinging each other to say, did you get that? Did you get that? I know that's a pain. I know internally it's a pain for us, but so you keep, you, it, you just won't miss, miss those opportunities. Now I'm going to try this poll, Greg. All right. I have no idea if it's going to work. Me neither. <laughs> I expect to submit. No. <laughs> What is going on with Zoom? All right. So I expect to submit what? How many proposals? One, two to five, five to 10, or more than 10 proposals by the end of this month? Tell us in the chat so we I can forward that to Greg because he's the one who cares about that one. But if you can uh, if you can let us know how many, how many you expect to submit, because Greg Clark, you mentioned this. This stuff turns around all the time. You guys are responsible. A lot of times you're the guys that are doing the response for your clients, right? That's, that's what we're here to do. That's exactly right. So what do you see coming in and how can folks prepare for being able to turn around an RFP response? Well, I think a lot of people look at it as it's just, it's just too challenging. It's too hard. And this is a, a, a terrible time to be trying to uh, pursue contracts because it's just so hard with it with the short turnaround times and I'm coming from the exact opposite position. Everybody else feels that way. So this is an opportunity to compete for projects with very limited competition. Bingo, we, can do, we can do things that nobody else can do. Let's let's go at it that way. That's right. We're going to do it. They're not going to do it. And we're and that's that's uh, low hanging fruit. Uh, that you are spot on, man. And, and so when you think about what Greg just said, you're actually flipping it around because normally Greg knows me. I hate, I hate the bid churn. Don't I? You hate paperwork. I hate paperwork. I hate the bid churn. I'd much rather be in front of somebody, develop a relationship so that they, that I can feed them information so that it in, increases my potential to be able to, for them to buy from me. I want to push that information to them. You can't push it, that information. This is the only shot you got. And guess what? Because everybody else is thinking, Oh, well, the, well, the incumbent, the incumbent has been there for 15 years and they're not going to lose. Well, guess what? What are the chances if they've been there for 15 years that they are becoming complacent and nobody else is bidding and they think that they just can win by putting in the proposal that they did five years ago? Does that happen, Greg Clark? I was sorry. I was reading. I was reading questions. Oh man! <laughs> I'm sorry. I was reading questions. Yeah, complac Jason complacency Moore. can become an issue. So if you're not monitoring the relationship and you're not see, this is why it's important. Business development and relationship building is an ongoing process. It oh, never stops. Oh, there it is. It never stops. It never stops. Right. You're developing a relationship. Right. It intensifies at the end of the federal fiscal year, such as now, because now it's harvest season. But it never stops. So you should be doing this all the time. And if you, you're really serious about doing work with one of your top five agencies, then you, you have to make it your business to know exactly what is going on in those programs where you want to get your foot in the door. You want to be reading the uh, performance ratings uh, of the existing contractors. You want to see if there's any issues with, with non-delivery of, of compliant products or services. You need to make it your business to know what's going on. To, say, to make sure that you can offer something better, cheaper, faster, right? So it's, it's again, it's part of your homework. Correct. And, Couldn't and agree I more. Think, I think David and, and Greg. Um, Greg I, oh, Sean May's in the house. <laughs> Sorry, oh, Sean, go I, ahead. I had IT issues earlier, but I'm in the house. <laughs> I, I, I think the issue, one of the issues we had early on is we were looking at a thirty-four million dollar contract, and Greg Clark was completely on board with helping us. Um, okay, over five years, so it wasn't thirty-four. Foot. Yeah, but that's still a good chunk, man. It's a it's a great chunk, and uh, we could not make our guys internally understand that. Because, um, look, we give, and Greg, I'll, I'll let you speak to this, but we, okay. we give one or two million to Wiley Ryan over the years. We give one or whatever we give to you guys. I, I don't give a shit. Whatever we give. Um, 
it, it was a good, I think, contract. And, and Eric's response to Greg, and, and I apologize for this, but <laughs> he basically said, well, we can't chase every cat in a row. Right. Yep. Well, and you can't, but you can chase some of them, right? Yeah. And, and, and ones that are worth $34 million or <laughs> You chase those, right? If you have if you have the experience and capabilities that match up with the submittal requirements and the evaluation criteria, yeah, it's, that's so, what, that's how that's how you divvy up the ones that you don't pursue that you're not going to win. Yeah, so I I I I waste it, and I appreciate Greg's time. I waste some of his time and his team's <laughs> time, and um, it is what it is, and it's a a, a learning curve for our team. Which sucks for Greg because, <laughs> because we use his time. No, but hey, man, that's what we're that's what we're all here for. And as much as as much as we're as, as much, it, it doesn't always work out. But the fact yeah. of the matter is, is Greg is here. He does a great job of being able yeah. to respond for those proposals. Let me get. Hey, Sean, I'll get. The, we'll get this. We got some questions. We got to get to. Yeah, we have, get a lot. The tips. we have a lot. We have a there, lot. We have a bunch of them. Go so go go. The no couple worries. of tips, the last couple of tips is double check your response. How important is it to submit a response that's complete, Greg Clark? It's, it's the difference between winning and losing. That's exactly right. Standard forms need to be signed. All the check boxes have to be checked. Amendments and, uh, acknowledged. And, and what? Amendments acknowledged. Amendments acknowledged. How many times have we seen that? And then finally, for the last week, the last final one, you have the night watch of 930. Uh, and and you mentioned this. When was the last one that came in for you last year, Greg? It was pro- it was the it was the Saturday night before the last Saturday. Saturday night of the month. Last Saturday night of the month. And so, so, in this- so Greg, you got something at nine like thirty. We get, yeah, it was it was like five thirty on Saturday night, the last Saturday <laughs> before the end of the month, and it was due uh, like at nine thirty Monday morning, whatever Monday that morning. was, whatever date that was. That would be. That would be the 29th last year. Yeah. So in the, and so in this instance, it's 1129 or 1159. What is that? 1129. That's that's a typo. It's 1159 Hawaiian time. And that's 559 Eastern. Just letting you know, that's, that's pretty doggone early. So watch your faxes, watch your email, keep your phone on. And now I'm going to find out if this is working. I think all of our polls have decided to shut down. Uh, I need prof- everybody knows I need professional help. <laughs> you want me to read a question while you're looking? Yeah, you go ahead. Cause... Okay, so so Steve Tolk says, um, past performance is very important. We are a, solely a subcontractor. We want to get our first prime contract. We do try and steer the government to accept more anecdotal past performance versus CPARs or formal PP questionnaires, which often our clients won't provide. Or prime prohibits any suggestions on what else to do, and he is in the um, defense and space uh, intel systems engineering management consulting for major and minor acquisitions. You got anything on that? So, I mean, it's, it's coming down to past performance, as yeah, past, as, it, as it frequently does. Past performance is the classic catch twenty two. Right. Yeah. If if they're only requiring federal experience and all of your experience is is uh, commercial. Yeah. Then yeah. you know the, you can't do it. The you, you can never, typically find out a lot about uh, the agency's uh, feelings of the current contractor by the past performance requirements. Correct. So you if know, if they're if they're if they're if they're written in a way that's going to exclu- exclude a lot of people, there may be a reason for that. To, how true. to get them to change it. If if uh, if you can tell me, then we'll both know. That's right. And fingerprints. If yes. you don't, if you didn't put your fingerprints on it, your competitor did. That's a rule. That's a rule that we follow. Yeah. We didn't. So um, I got a couple here. I'm gonna uh, got Ron Robinson. Can you help with incurred costs or cancel contracts when the contractor accidentally awards accidentally awarded a contract and then took <laughs> it back because they said they made a mistake. That's a lawyer question. You need to send that to Sean May, and I'll make sure you get the Sean May's email address because that yeah, that is that is for you, Sean. That sounds really bizarre. So yeah, yeah 
Esme at Fed Practice. Uh, I'll, I'm happy talking this afternoon about Absolutely. that. Absolutely, that just sounds weird. Yeah, that's a weird one. Jason that, Moore, my experience has been that buyers of my service most often utilize a set aside requirement, and I do not qualify for these set as, any set asides. When I attempt to team with SB, the small business. A, a as a sub or some other level of teaming arrangement, it just doesn't seem doesn't make sense because we can't be price competitive with the added cost layer to cover the margins. Have you dealt with this kind of experience and how do you approach? That's a great question, Jason Moore. And always, and this is this is a short answer to a very complicated complicated question. But <clears throat> if price is an issue, the value is not clear. Your teaming relationship, your deliverable has to be separated enough to be able to cover that cost price difference. If price is an issue, then the value is not clear. We can talk about that another time. I'd love to talk with you about that. Brian Matthews, our corporate office is located and registered in Ontario, Canada. We're registered in STAM, numerous government contracts. However, we're a small minority woman-owned business, but have not going through the process is there a path for our company to obtain this classification or is that only available for u.s companies or citizens Raphael, is is the small the, the small minority women owned so either 8a and or wosb is that only for u.s companies and citizens yes uh the 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 the, the applicant small business concern must be a u.s citizen the person that controls the day-to-day -day operations and runs the firm must be, uh, in, in the case of an EDWOSB or WOSB, must be a woman, and she must be a U.S. national. There it is. Now, uh, in the DBE program, I'm sorry, with the United States Department of Transportation, the, re the requirement there is for legal permanent residence. So you don't have to be a U.S. citizen as long as you are a green card holder, you can apply for the DBE program under the United States Department of Transportation DBE certification. Mm, fantastic. I knew we brought you here for a reason, Dr. Marrero. <laughs> I'm sorry, I was reading a different question. Did you point out that you um, you need to have a, a U.S. office? No, 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 no. You need to have, well, you need to be a U.S. Uh, the applicant concern, the, the, the primary share uh, owner of the firm must be a U.S. national, a U.S. citizen. Okay. In the country, uh, yeah. God. I know. I know that for for um, purposes of applying for the GSA schedule, the the company can't be considered a small business um, if they don't have an office in the U.S. Correct. Correct. Well, you know, if you're applying for, you must have an office in the U.S. or one of its territories. To, to just to clarify, right? So, continental United States or one of its territories. So, for example, if you're part of Puerto Rico, U.S. Virgin Islands, et cetera, et cetera. Yes. Otherwise, you're a large. Uh, otherwise, citizen, you're a large business. U.S. citizenship is required. Okay. Yep. Otherwise, you. you're other than small. Yeah. Which is the same thing that happens with nonprofits, by the way. Um, Carrie, Karen K. Wood, same that bid, eighty nine dollars a month. Yes, that is true. Uh, Elise Elfman, can you refer me to a company that would do the research for us to find bids and awards from three to five years ago, not current bids, that will be up for bid next year, so we can go. In prior to the solicitations, meet agencies and up pre and pre-sell our solution. That is exactly what you want to do, Elise. I happen to know a company that does exactly that. Greg and Raphael, who is a company that actually do that? Actually does that. That's, well, we help with all the question. <laughs> we help with all of the. That would be me. Uh, uh, readiness and and then Greg helps with the proposal writing and also with the. IDIQs and multi-award schedule uh, uh, contracts. So yeah, you're in good hands. Yep. Dave calls us the dream team. Ah, that's right. Uh, Karen K. Wood, uh, is there a way to look before pay? You're talking about Sam.bid. There is no, not right now, there's no way to look before, for, before doing it. I'm sure if there would be even any requests for Springs. Tell you what, what, what you can do though, is you can, you can uh, schedule a time with Zachary. Zachary, put your, you there, Zach? Zachary, you on? All right, put your uh, put your uh, Calendly link in there, and we'll make sure that uh, you can you can get uh, you can get with Karen. So if you want to talk about Sam .bid before you do it and and find out if it's going to work for you, that's the way to do it. All right, I know. It. Okay, three bids for Jan. Okay, good there. Harold says, 
Yes, I saw this happen at Oracle with a $240 million contract. Not sure exactly what that was in response to Harold, but that I would agree. Probably <laughs> end of the end of the fiscal year. End of the uh, fiscal stuff. year. Yeah. Hello, hello all. I have a question. This is from uh, Dung Pham. Uh, I have a question. My we manufacture combination and mechanical locks for lockers. In your opinion, can we sell the locks by itself to the government project or does it have to go with the lockers? Chances are it's going to go with the lockers. That's my gut. But that's what I would say. But you never really know because if they have an issue with 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 locks, they may buy the locks separately for replacements. That would be my gut. Can't say for sure, though. Jim Mills looking for subcontract sub opportunities is we're not quite large enough to tackle as a prime. Great, 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 Jim. Uh, what is the best avenue to find sub opportunities? Uh, my recommendation is that, that we have a, the SAM that bid system with AMP will provide you what the contract awards were for yesterday or very recent, like in the past week. And then you want to run the, then within that report, you will have the ability to connect with the prime winner uh, because we have the database to be able to connect those. So I would recommend get on that, that link that Zachary put in and talk to Zachary and see if that would be a fit for you. Depends on what you do. doesn't fit for everybody, but that may be an answer for you. So Dave, we'd love to talk about the issue with price competitiveness. We'll do. I'd love to do that. LPTA. God bless me. I pursue. Your, your <laughs> if free is your favorite four letter word, LPTA is your oh my, least that favorite, is my four, least letter favorite four letter word. <laughs> It is absolutely, and and I have I have personally lost significant money to LPTA, and that goes to that's starting to change. But you're you got to get it. You either have to get whatever the technical is, right? It's technically acceptable. LP lowest price technically acceptable. You've got to help define what technically acceptable is, or you have to pull that out of that and make it a best value because there's no way to do it. If if it's just a if it's a drive down to the price to the bottom, I love it. that's a great point, Jason. I appreciate that. All right, so there you go, Jason. Got your information, fantastic. Um, how long does it typically take to obtain a WOSB, Rafael Marrero, for Victoria Baptiste? Uh, it varies because government has a backlog now with COVID. However, our most recent. Uh, uh, process for one of Greg's referrals, actually, a client that Greg sent was 97 days from the moment that we signed paper to actually uh, uh, receive the certification and the certificate from the U.S. government. So 97, we've done it in as little as three months. That's, that's Acorn, right? Well, that's, Phil, that, that's tremendous because we're telling people because we want to be as upfront as we can be. Yeah, sure. We're telling people, you know, 180 days. So how many? We're telling people 180 days. Just yeah, typically that's what our competitors take. Yeah, uh, we, we yeah. don't we don't want to oversell. You know what I'm saying? It, yeah, it, you don't want to oversell and under deliver. Yeah. Right. So, so if you're getting it in 97 days, that's fantastic. Well, yeah, I mean, we're not about, this isn't about overselling it either. Uh, I, want, I want to be clear. We've put in processes and systems in place to enhance the experience for the clients. Yeah. Uh, and, and especially when there's requests for information or follow-ups, uh, we tell, we, we rather err on the side of caution and, and prepare for the worst and hope for the best. So we, you know, to save yep. 180 yep. days and deliver in 97 days, it makes you look like a rock star. I agree. <laughs> I couldn't agree more. That's exactly right. Uh, Jan, Chir Jan Cherkowski, I need help or consulting with revamping our website to gear toward the government business. I would reach out to Raphael uh, for that. And then you, you may, if there's social media pieces, there's, there may be some other places that, that we can we can get you to. So Raphael Marrero, um, can you, I don't know if you can see the question and answers on yours. I'm looking here. Let's see. Uh, Jan Jerkowski is Jan, there. Jan. Okay. So W O S V. You mean you mean a small a veteran owned? Is that what it? Uh, w O S B. Got it. Yeah, I got you. We got you. Don't you worry, Victoria. All right. So we got through those. Uh, I think we got more with the chat. What What do you see in there, Greg Clark, for for chat um, here? Uh, Lee was asking if we do 8A certifications. I let him know it was Raphael, and he said he's got it. He, so Raphael's information is right above where Lee's question was. 
um, uh, Raphael's contact information. I just put my contact information in a little note that we do proposal assistance and GSA schedule uh, support. So um, I think we're kind of up to speed. I think, I think next time we need to do all questions in Q&A and contact information in the chat instead you of both. You are correct. That's a great organizational yeah. structural change that we're going to do. <laughs> you should see my sock drawer. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh! All right, we got a couple minutes left. Um, I think we got to leave on the sock drawer thing. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, so I will I say this: I think that's a drop moment. But I'm sorry, <laughs> we, if you see anything else that we need to as, answer, um, Terry or Greg, because I know Terry's watching as well. Next 54 weeks is not just about the next two weeks; it's about the next 54 weeks after that. So answer the question why in 2021 and 2022, why they should let you in. You can differentiate, differentiate yourself in answering the why. Gov brief, you can start this in October. You can't do it now, but pushing this out, it's, it's one of the best ways to reach program people as well as, as build your value. You mentioned it, Jason, building your value uh, in, into the end of the process where you are the subject matter expert. We'll help you do connectivity with the initiatives. We interview you. We drive the invites. We do the follow-ups and drive the message home that they need to meet with you personally. And that's, you get those meetings and then we're pounding them uh, throughout the year with this. And uh, if you plan, and I, my recommendation is you put that in your budget for 2022. And I'm going to roll through this and say, this is the last my, only part. Is, my only question, David, is where's Sally? I don't know where Sally is. I don't. I don't know. What, it's weird. She. She. Uh, she didn't pop up today. Um. And and here we go. Uh, One point two trillion do trillion dollars. The rest of it has to be spent. There's still billions of dollars that need to be spent. We're gonna be talking about that today with with uh, with uh, Carl Dixon. He's the founder of PropLibrary.com. And that's at one o'clock. You can sign up for that at GovBrief. www.govbrief.us. You can grab that there. I recommend everybody go to sam.bid, $89. Try it out. You're right. You're not going to do it for free, especially not in September. Try it out <laughs> and you can do that. And you can do the same thing. If you have a GSA contract, if you do not, you cannot use quick fuse. There, is, there, is, uh, there are opportunities that don't post anywhere else except GSA eBuy that are only available to GSA contract holders, which is why you may want to consider getting a GSA contract. $1.7 trillion is what we're expecting. Then in the next 381 days, we have huge, huge, huge spending. We thought that we thought that infrastructure was going to happen four years ago, but now it looks like we're, we're getting to a place there. But if you want it, you better be disrupting the status quo because your competitors are already there gearing up and have relationships that are existing and you got to get in on those relationships. If you want to check more out about ISI Federal, you can see us on YouTube. You can see us on LinkedIn. And you can reach out to Greg Clark if you want one of those fabulous GSA schedules or if you have one that needs a little maintenance. Am I right? Proposal assistant, proposal assistance and GSA schedule support. And, 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 and just for people who, who aren't familiar with it, uh, Dave's uh, programs are so worth it the the, the <laughs> asa the beta um yep. you just get so much information from those two links um it is it is crazy the, the amp system and i know you have you've been using it and yeah I, it, and it, I, I want you to help me pitch it but it's 1202 and i gotta prep for a briefing <laughs> it's just happening in an hour go Rafael ahead buddy. Marrero, david uh, Yes. David, go. But yeah, I just right. want to throw you a bone. I, I just think it's a fantastic program. So uh, you go do what you got to do. I'm going to go do what I got to do. And we'll All right. Go. Sounds All good. Right. Rafael right. Marrero, if you need help with the socioeconomic certifications as well as getting your ducks in a row, that's what you do, right, Rafael Marrero? Absolutely. Look good on paper and on the internet for the contracting <laughs> officer. That's right. And Sally White, who we mentioned, who is not here today, she helps with the, the LinkedIn things as well. So if you're interested in that, we can she can help you out. You can reach out to Sally. Peter Timbus, you still here? I'm still here. <laughs> I know. It was a long, long time for you to get back here. But you help with the contract funding. So once you get a contract, you can help. 
Correct. And the thing that the people should realize, we'll lend to your opportunity rather than your financial statements. So you sign up with David to get the contracts. Don't worry about size. If you want a big contract, we'll lend against it. So do not worry that you're going to get a big contract and you don't have the financial resources to handle it. We will provide it for you. Yep. And here's, here's uh, something that's really important. Here. I was, I was at Hub Zone this last week, and I sang the praises of your company <laughs> because I don't like – I don't think enough people know about what you do. Well, it's coming, baby. <laughs> John checks in the mail. Checks Every, in the mail. It's coming, I, baby. I, I did. I, I was just <laughs> like, you know, for companies that are just not comfortable with bidding for, again, I'll, I'm going to make this number up, but if they're, you know, if they're, if they're bidding for a $10 million contract and, and, and they don't have the, the people, et cetera, um, I pitched you as a friend of Dave Lowe saying, no, I'm serious, Dave. I, I did. believe you, man. I did. I, I said, look, here's a company that if you get that contract, they can help you get everybody on board. I, I couldn't agree more. And that's why I love it. We got to get everybody out of here. All Happy right. New Year will be uh, – we're going to do this the third Tuesday instead of the second Tuesday. So that's what we're going to be doing, um, and that's news to everybody here who's a panelist. Who's <laughs> but we're going to do that on the on the third Tuesday because we start all over again. we got to get our, our act together. We're going to be talking about disrupting the status quo, why they should let you in. This is my information if you need to reach me. Nancy Underwood, thanks for being with us. And, and uh, we're going to – we want to incorporate you into some more things later because I think there's a lot that can be learned uh, by by somebody that that just the persistence, just that piece that you had for two and a half years as an 8A, by the way. Not only that one, um, our day, I did the U.S. State Department the same way in Washington, D.C. I flew up there for a year and a half and they got tired of seeing me. Is that Underwood down the corner? Go ahead, do a rewise. Uh, All right, we got to get out of this emergency. Oh, you're next week. There's an emergency in your in your building. <laughs> All right, guys. Thanks again for joining us. And, and uh, the email for funding is, what's your email for funding, Peter Timbus? TF, wait a minute. You got to unmute Peter, yourself. you're muted. It's it's TFN. Let me, let me TFN see. TFN at actioncapital.com. TFN at actioncapital.com. So... I th I'll put that in here for everybody. TFN at action capital. Capital with an A, right? Yeah, it's 202 400 1123. There you go. So that's that TFN at action capital.com. Yep. All right. Fantastic, guys. Thanks for joining us. Hope to see you next month. Appreciate you guys.